it's Wendy here and today I'm going to be telling some, <laughs> not all, just some. Um, so I'm going to basically explain like just some of the things that I've been seeing like a lot of questions asked online considering two people asked me to do it. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to give the people what they want. I'm gonna give you two people who what you want. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and kind of just explain my experience in Survivor. At least I'll give you like a little more insight like beyond my edit. So I kind of just wanted to start with just again, some of the questions that I've been asked. So um, I actually applied for my first time uh, with my boyfriend. And that was probably like a couple months before we actually left to the island. So that was really exciting. He is like the biggest fan. Like he's been watching with his family since he was a little kid. Um, and he introduced me to the show. So when I watched it, I was like, ooh, that's something I would love to do. So yeah, I'm not going to go into like the entire experience, but I'm just going to hit like the main points. So I kind of want to start this off by just stating that I loved my edit. I know I am just like the known as the crazy chicken lady now. The editors work with what they have, right? So I understand not a lot of my strategy was was able to be shown, but the, the problem is that a lot of people can't see beyond the edit. Like they think that's me, like five minutes of me, that's like my personality, which I'm not saying it isn't because everything that happens, everything that the editors put in there, both producers decide to make part of the story, we did, right? So we can't say like, oh no, they're, they're putting me in such a bad light. Like I know they compiled a lot of my craziness and put it in front of you guys. So that's why a lot of you guys think I'm very crazy. Again, not saying I'm not. I want to start a little bit before I got onto the island. So a lot of you guys saw me in pregame. And again, I see everything that goes on online, like on Reddit and everything. I was like just trolling everywhere. And the first thing that people tell me is like, don't do that because people are going to be talking shit about you and I was like that I, I want to see <laughs> so I would see that people were like oh she's crazy oh she talks a million words a minute oh I can see she's gonna be annoying and it wasn't that great that my first videos that you guys saw was my preseason stuff which was me go talking like this uh, <laughs> and that's because during Ponderosa you're sequestered with everyone you can't talk and you can't do anything and I'm a very hyperactive person so the whole time I was kind of like <laughs> like I, I was really like I had so much pent up energy. So finally, I think a week in when we got to do those interviews, I was like, <laughs> I was ready to go. I was like jumping off the wall. So then that's why when I did my interviews, I was like, <laughs> and then like, so a lot of people were like, oh, she's annoying. She's going to be like that 24 seven. So when I was out on the island, I didn't talk that much. Um, to like the other castaways like I know that sounds like crazy you're like oh no when he talks a mile a minute she doesn't let anybody speak but just I guess I, w I wasn't able to um, find similarities with me and the other castaways like um, just most of the time it's not like I didn't try like I tried I was like oh hi what's your name oh where are you from how many brothers and sisters do you have but beyond that again I was just kind of like I'm, I'm just not that great at making friends quickly and in a game like Survivor, you are you have to kind of make friends really fast in order to form alliances and stuff. And it's not that I'm not capable of making friends, it's just that I need more time, I guess, than the average person. So yeah, it was kind of funny how, um, I guess, talkative or how, not social, but like I was just really out there on the edit. And it was funny because during my confessionals, that's exactly how I was. I was like this. Um, the the producers were my favorite, so and I would always say, "You guys are my only friends on this island." So I would talk to them just how I'm talking to you guys. Um, so I would be like super friendly, like during confessionals and talking. And then when I would go back to camp, I'd be like, <laughs> like I I don't know why I would close up. And it wasn't I I guess because sometimes I would actually try. I, like I would try to talk to them, but they would either just, I don't know if we didn't have the same humor, or I don't know what it was, but like it would like the conversations, conversations would trail off. I had a really good rapport with like Rick and David, but I feel like they were more interested in me than anything. Like they were more amazing. They were like, what is she even? Like, I don't know. I don't know. I My conversations just were not of the norm and I guess I, it, it kind of intrigued them. I don't want to generalize and say everybody on that tribe was like a bad person, you know? And just, um, just my experience with uh, my original tribe just wasn't the best. But just kind of when you meet somebody and you just kind of get a good vibe or not with certain people. Like I just didn't get a good vibe with certain people in the tribe. And um, it wasn't that I wasn't trying. Like a lot of people are like, well you did that to your game and you did this. It just, from the first day I really felt hostility. Um, against myself and I try to I try to overcome it because again it's a game you can't just sit there and be like oh nobody likes me right but it's just that like I feel like the more I would try or like if I would try to get to know someone like it was there was always that wall saying like oh you're cute Wendy but like 
don't even try you know it was kind of like that so that first day i was kind of like you know full of energy i was like let's do this i'm really I, I love being crafty, so when I was out there, I felt I felt like I was in Minecraft. Like, I was just like, I'm gonna build everything, and I, I just love enjoying that stuff. I've never really had any outdoor experiences. Like, I don't go, like, camping and stuff. I don't know, it just came really naturally to me, like, natural to me. So, right when we got there, I knew I was gonna help with the shelter. So I was helping do the, like, the top part of the shelter. So then, at one point, I remember Chris, um, I think we were done with the top, and people were weaving palm fronds. And um, Chris started cutting the bamboo for the base, so I went to go help him. And it kind of seemed like he was kind of off put by that, like kind of like if he wanted to do it himself. And I didn't want to push and be like, no, I'm going to help you. Like it looked like he really wanted to take charge and be like, hey, I'm in this position that I'm going to do everything. So then I was like, okay, well, I'm going to, so I can finish the roof, I'm going to go help with palm fronds. And I didn't know how to do that. So I went on over to there and I was like, hey guys, what, what you guys doing over here? And they're like, palm fronds. So I think it was either David or... Or Rick who taught me how to do palm fronds I didn't know how but right when he did when he taught me like I, I got into it really fast with my spider fingers like I was just like really good at it so I started teaching other people so that's when they cut into the scene in the first episode where you just see like me Keith and uh, Reem together because they were already working there they were already doing that we were just sitting there and that's kind of the scene that you saw that we were just kind of bonding Reem was asking about my life and it wasn't only just us three like I remember Rick being there we were all working on palm fronds I was finishing them very fast so I would finish one and go back to the shelter and put it on there when people were still working on their first one I was like doing a lot so they called me Wendy the Weaver I remember I, I don't like being not active like I need to be doing something so I was like what's next what's next and people were like oh we should start doing a fire I was like well I can help and this is where I felt this is where I felt like the split really happened because when I went to go help with the fire um this is just my feeling there were two people that weren't really helping but it's not because they were lazy or anything I just feel like they were out of their element or they didn't know how to do stuff i feel like they really wanted to prove themselves and try to make fire so when i was like oh i can help you guys they're like no 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 you go um do the palm fronds and i was like but we really need fire like that one's important they're like we've got it we've got it i was like okay so i started doing palm fronds and they were doing fire they were doing fire and they weren't getting it so i went back and i was like hey you guys i can really help we should be alternating no 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 it's fine and it kind of kept going like that for like a few hours and I was like you guys you know what we, we're really gonna need fire and if if we all work as a tribe we'll get this and like Manu was really like they Manu didn't work as a tribe I was kind of pointing that out with Reem I was just like they need to let us help if we are not alternating they're gonna get tired and we're not gonna get it so point is when when I was just like we're gonna help so me and Reem walk over and we're like hey we're gonna help you do fire they're like no we're done we couldn't get it and they all went down to the beach to wash off or I don't know what and I was upset at that point and, and me Reem and Keith started trying to make it and obviously with three people we couldn't I mean Joey amazing was able to do it by himself but we, we weren't able to so we went down to the water and that's when we started helping Keith how to swim so that whole swimming scene happened they left we tried to make fire didn't work so we went down to the water we stayed all the whole tribe together maybe five minutes before they got out of the water and that's when the swimming scene happened where they like you can still see in the episode they're drying off while we're teaching Keith to swim like right from the first day they were pushing us aside and we can just kind of tell like okay they're not gonna even attempt to try to work with us and at this point we're not even trying to vote anybody off we should be thinking as a tribe and that's not what was happening it was already like and I understand it's a game but at the same time like th th that tribe was set to fail but from the first day Manu was gonna be a mess Manu was gonna be a disaster so that's when I started just seeing people for who they were I try to look at myself and I, I realize when I'm being annoying when I'm full of energy I can be very annoying but I, I, I keep thinking back and even when I was there I was like I'm not doing anything to you guys like you guys just already had like these, this preconception that no I'm not gonna work with you guys for whatever reason and that's it for certain people I just felt like they were threatened because maybe I was doing more around camp than they were and then just other people were following suit going with the majority and again I'm completely fine with that so that was day one so day one basically established where everybody was and there's a lot that you don't see um day two was no better it was or you could already see like the little clicks happening and everything so for anybody just to suggest that me Keith and Reem were the swimming trio or oh we were building an alliance why can't they it wasn't like that and not that I don't love 
having them as friends because now me and me Keith and Reem are like this um the only problem is it's not so much that it was our choice it was so much that oh we're not gonna work with them so <laughs> you guys do what you have to so I mean in a game like Survivor you're like okay well this is the hand I was dealt so I'm gonna play it the next thing I wanted to talk about is the Reem vote so fast forward to day three um, we do the challenge and again, Manu is the, <laughs> Manu the mess. That's the biggest thing, like everybody wanted to be in charge. Everybody was louder. So when we had to like plan what we were going to do, everybody was screaming over each other and it was just like not organized. So we, we lose the challenge and we go back to camp and we're kind of, um, just like considering we're like, we don't want to kick anybody out. Like we have, no, we haven't all been getting along, but like, again, you don't want to lose. So everybody's thinking we're all throwing names around and stuff. And um, so Reem's name comes out and I felt just so bad because what they told me was oh it's because she's annoying people because she's moving people's clothes and she, she's not asking for permission. So I asked them, I was like, well, I, and that was like, I was shocked because like, I was just like, she's been very helpful. It's true. It had been raining and she had been drying her clothes and like for them, they, I feel like they just want to scapegoat. They're like, well, you know what? She's been the most irritating for this reason or the other. I heard a bunch of different reasons, but they had landed on that because she had been moving people's clothes. And I said, oh, well, have you told her that that bothers you? And everybody just stayed quiet. They're like, I mean, no. So I'm just like, okay, well, if something's bothering you, you guys have to, you know, say something. And that's like a main thing about like this tribe. Like if something was bothering people, they wouldn't say it to their face, but they would talk behind their back. Okay, well, you know, an easy fix is don't, uh, don't touch my clothes, please. And I understand maybe Reem shouldn't have been touching people's clothes, but it's not like she was doing it maliciously. She wasn't throwing it in the ocean. She was like, she was finding a way that she could help. And to me, she was helping. So at that point, I, um, so it goes to the scene where um, I'm walking around propping my eye open because um, I had gotten sand in there. At that time, um, I, I, I gathered Reem was going home. I knew she was going home. It's no grand surprise. I, obviously, I was trying to scramble for her, but if it was, she was going home. So that whole um, scene where they, they come and approach me and talking about her, um, I explained to them. At first, I was saying, hey, is there any way we can do this? No, it's too early. Okay, okay, okay. So I said, you know what? I understand. I understand Reem is going home, but I don't want her to feel ganged up on. So you guys, I'm gonna vote with her. I understand I'm throwing my vote away, but I mean, I don't want her entire survivor experience to be like, hey, everybody just ganged up on me and, and that's my survivor experience. Like I didn't, again, we didn't know about the edge or anything. I didn't know she was gonna be a legacy. It's like, I wouldn't let that happen in real life. And for, I, I, as you guys could see, like I didn't do a lot. Um, a lot of the things I did weren't like in good sense for the money. And, but I just, I would, I am not a person to just, just sit there when somebody's kind of getting like picked on or or ganged up on so i told them i understand i'm throwing my vote away um i i'm gonna vote with reem just so she doesn't feel alone and i explained that to him and they were like oh when he's being difficult and this and that i'm like no i understand nothing else is gonna change i understand reem is going home and i know it might be stupid for the game but at the end of the day like she's a person and i don't want her to feel ganged up on so then uh, that whole thing happened like, oh, when you can't be trusted, this and that, paranoia running rampant. And I'm like, I'm fine with that. You guys didn't like me already. So go ahead. So I wanted it to be so less of a surprise that I had told the person I was going to be voting for. I was like, hey, you know what? I'm writing your name down. So don't be surprised. And obviously that's not a good thing. They don't want their names written down. But at the same time, it's better than like, ha, nyaka, nyaka, I was going after you, you know, I just found it so unfair how they were treating her during that tribal as well. And I was like, there's no way I'm just going to gang up on her and vote for her. Like, I know. I know how to play the game like I understand this isn't the hill to die on so if I could do it again I would so that's the Reem vote and I knew Keith was gonna vote for Reem like I knew he was gonna flip his vote to her and I told him I was like you know what I totally understand and I know I'm next in line so I I don't blame Keith for anything that he did because I know he was gonna vote for me like I said that I trusted him 100% because if there was anything that he was able to do to save me, he would have done it. But at the same time, like this game is self-preservation. Like I don't expect he to do what I did for Reem. I know I wasn't going to play the game like a lot of people do, you know? So I understood Keith's actions and I think that's a fantastic game move. At that time, I already had a feeling I was like, okay, well, you know what? They split the votes with me. I'm probably next. So. Um, during that challenge, I just wanted to show like, hey, you know what? Like, let's not try to lose this. So like, I'm really, I'm a really good swimmer. I wanted to show off like my swimming capabilities. 
so I did that like the reason that I didn't go home was because um, everybody was just blaming Keith for the challenge, but it wasn't, it wasn't even Keith's fault. We, we, where we dropped the ball was during the snake part, because again, everybody was yelling over each other, um, trying to lift up that snake and it just wasn't happening because everybody was trying to do something, you know. So if there was more teamwork, I feel like we could have pulled ahead. So then after the Keith vote, we start getting, we start getting to where my edit starts, uh, veering off of underdog more to crazy land. <laughs> so at this point, um, I'm mad because I mean Reem's gone, Keith's gone because I really felt like I wasn't doing anything to, to my tribe mates for them to like hate me or isolate me and I understand again it's a game so yeah if she has to be isolated that's fine but I felt like the things that they were doing went beyond the game and um, it would be one thing for them to you know um, isolate me and then that's fine I was like okay fine I'll wait for my vote out if you guys really don't want to talk game with me but the thing is that they were doing things that went beyond the game and for me, I just didn't feel comfortable with the type of people that they were. Like they were doing very unnecessary things. Um, so this this all happened before like the whole Flint and Chicken thing. Like I'm gonna get to that. So already, this is already day six. So we start getting to the part where like the tribe starts getting a bit nasty. I'm just noticing that these people really relish on the fact of like the, basically like the failure of others. like. Every time somebody got voted off, oh my god, oh my god, for the next days they were just talking shit about everybody who got voted off. And like, I know we have a lot of downtime, I get it, I understand. But it like becomes a thing that it's so grating over and over. It's like, they were talking about Reem and, and just unnecessary things. They were talking about Keith, I was just like, like you guys, like, can't you just stay positive for one thing? So I was already, I felt like because I wouldn't contribute to that, then that's where like I would isolate more and, and Survivor is like a social aspect of it. But I really went into this not trying to be a nasty person. That's why you guys always saw me like with a smile and trying to stay positive with everything. So um, I felt like that's what made me like an easier target. They're like, oh, well, Wendy isn't gonna, you know, talk bad about anyone. So let's make fun of her and see like her snapping point or something. So they would just do really unnecessary things that um, I, I didn't think were part of the game at, at all. Like they can defend it as much as they want, but I don't. I don't believe that that was part of the game like so it might not mean anything to you guys like you guys might be like oh my god Wendy get over it like oh it's such a small thing but for me being alone on the island it just it was just so uh, frustrating it's like a different kind of loneliness out there you know and especially because when you're like isolated from your whole tribe so a lot of them knew I liked animals they knew I liked insects like I was really Anytime there was a hermit crab, I would take it to the beach. Anytime there was anything, I would always try to, if I, if something shouldn't be unnecessarily killed, I don't believe in it. Like, I don't like it, as you guys can see, we'll, we'll later talk about the chickens. Um, so when there was just like a hermit crab, like, instead of stepping on it, I mean, how is it gonna help you? If you step on this hermit crab, how, it's not gonna help you. Like, you're gonna forget about it and this hermit crab is dead. So I would take it down to the beach and stuff like that. So when people started noticing that I would, like, you know, be really careful around the animals and, like, not trying to kill things unnecessarily, um, they started noticing that. So I guess just to be, like, to make the others laugh or, you know, just to get a reaction out of me, they would, like, kill, kill things in front of me, like insects. And I just remember this one time that, um, we were all standing around getting ready for a challenge and I was just standing there and one of my tribe mates, I'm not, I'm not I'm trying not to name anybody um, because I mean there's just no point. So, so one of my tribe mates was like, hey, hey, look, look, and they pointed down at a little millipede, like a little centipede, um, little worm. I was on the on the dirt and I was like, oh, they, point, they pointed it out and like when I looked down and I smiled at them, they just stepped on it. And like I just I like looked down and looked up and like I looked around like everybody just started laughing and I was just like like oh it's just so frustrating because I was just like how is that necessary like how is that okay to you like oh like again like I'm not one to like make such a big deal about things it's just that at that moment I was just so upset and again like I was like this like I, I don't like crying I, if there's one thing I don't like crying it's like I'd rather have a smile on my face um, but at that point, like, I didn't want them to see me cry. So, like, I walked out of the tent. And again, like, this is so stupid. Like, people are gonna be like, oh, Wendy, you should fucking get over it's a millipede. But whatever. It was just the nastiness of, of what happened. So whatever, I get out of the uh, out of the tent and like I'm like going like this, going like this, and I'm just like no, ooh, ooh, they're not gonna see me cry. So I'm just going like this, going like this, and I'm, I'm trying to calm myself down, and then whatever. 
so I walked back into the tent. And I'm just like, whatever. I'm just looking down ready. And this was actually the um, the challenge for the chickens. So whatever, I'm right there. And then we're ready to go and stuff. Like they're ready to put us into the challenge. And then the person that did it, like obviously like when I went, walked back in, everybody was looking down like all serious. And I'm just like, yeah, now like this is like a second ago, you guys were laughing at me. And now you guys want to be like, oh, you know, so whatever. Um, We're getting ready to go to the challenge. And then... Um, and then this person's like, oh, ready? High five when they had never done that to me before. Like they had never been like, come on team or anything. And like, I just looked at them and just looked away. And I was just like, I'm not about to play your games. And they're like, what? You're really mad at me? And I'm just like, yes, you psychopath. Like what? Like who even does stuff like that? So whatever. I was already upset. And like, and when I, when we walk out there, you can see on my face that I was upset that they just, this just had happened. And then on top of that, um jeff is like oh you're playing for chickens and i was like oh like going on survivor i knew that chickens was gonna be like a, a part of it but i i was gonna apply several years back but every time i saw that these chickens were like subjected to these things like thrown in the water just like used for as a prop like i it just never sat good with me like i it never did and I know, like, again, everybody's gonna go back like, well, you're not a vegetarian, this, that, that. I understand that, but I'm still compassionate towards animals, and I just don't think that they should be treated like inanimate objects. Um, when the chickens come out, and I, I'm not sure why they didn't show this, but I'm begging and pleading with them, please take the comfort, you guys, please take the comfort, please don't get the chickens, get the comfort, comfort, comfort. And it was down to like, I don't know what it was, the split. And I, I am, I'm still. I, I might just all be in my head again I'm not even accusing any of this but I just felt at that moment that they were doing it to spite me like I really did because the people that were for the chickens were, uh, were the ones that didn't like me so so at the end it was like three versus three or I don't know how many people there were but finally they were like okay well we're taking the chickens and I was just like oh, like oh my god so at that point they had already been doing stuff they had already been uh really nasty to me just in in different ways like that's when I had hurt my ankle and um, so there were a lot of times where I knew they were making fun of me like I was still in earshot when they were making fun of me you know so they weren't that sneaky about it so for them to be like we were doing it behind her back like if that justifies it or anything when they were just making fun of me or just talking about me a lot of the times I was in earshot or a lot of the times I was just like they must have not spotted me like in the vicinity but I would hear what they were saying right or they would say offhanded things like if I was just not even aware of my my, situ my surroundings. So I was already just really upset with everything that had been going on to that point. And when we got the chickens, I was like, you know what? They, this tribe obviously doesn't value what um, what I do for the what what I do for the tribe. Um, what? Because I, again, I carried my weight around camp. I carried my weight in challenges. Yeah, my social game wasn't that great, and I I might have and. It might have been my fault that I put myself on the outs early. I don't know. But at the, at the end of the day, like, everybody out there is still a human being. And for you to act this way to, to, towards somebody is just un, inexcusable. I hurt my ankle. I was like, please don't pull me. Please don't pull me. Please don't pull me. I didn't know how bad, how bad it was. So I wish I just saw it swollen. And I was like, please, please don't pull me from the game. I, I don't want to go and... Um, the point is that they were just like, you know what, we're just gonna put compression on it and you should be fine. And what I want to point out is that um, that whole scene that came out about um, certain people making fun of me um, and then hearing their justifications just kind, kind of upsets me because not even, like, them trying to justify it in the first place is just like, okay, well that's the type of people you are. But at the same time, they don't know the full story. After the game, I had to get my ankle x-ray. Thankfully, it was just soft tissue damage but it was still hurting after the game. And after that, I was just limping around doing my own thing. I would still go get firewood. I would still go help around the camp. I wasn't even a burden to the team. So then that's why when we had done the next challenge and they were, they were deciding it was the swimming challenge, the immunity challenge, then I just really wanted to prove myself because again, I'm just like, I'm not a jabroni. I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna show like what I have. So then when that swimming thing happened, I gave it my all and I was I was behind Chris so I was pulling my weight during that challenge so then when they lost it and everything I was just so frustrated I was so mad all of these things had already like piled up and I was just like you know what like why am I even being nice to them they're not being nice to me there goes the first shenanigan me with the flip so one thing I want to say is that wasn't premeditated I didn't go on to survivor being like well I'm gonna hide the flip from my tribe like 
that's not how this goes. Like, if I was put on comma, you swear I would be hiding their flint. No, it was just that these people were awful to me in several instances. I was like, why am I being nice to you? So that's when I took the flip. And I'm not trying to justify my own things, but I want everybody to hear both sides. Like, yeah, we were bo both sides were very petty in what we did. Just because they highlighted, like, my bad instances, like, doesn't mean the other side didn't happen, you know? I understand why they wouldn't show certain things. Like, I wasn't playing the strategic underdog. I was playing, like, the wackadoo. What I had said in one of my confessionals, I said, well, you know what? It's very obvious that these people aren't trying to work with me. There's nothing I can say or do that is going to sway their mind. So what I'm going to do is trying to be as chaotic as possible where I'm not even seen as a threat in the game anymore. Like they wouldn't even, they would want to go after a big dog. So I was trying to, so once I took the flint, I tried to look super mopey. I went to the, to the end of the beach and I was just like, I'm I know I'm going home, you guys. I, like super, super mopey. But at the same time, it was also, hey, they're trying to kill and cook a chicken back there. So they would be like, oh, you know what? Like she's, she's already giving up. She's already this and that. Let's go after someone else. So I'm pretty sure that's what kept me in the game so long that at, when I knew that I wasn't going to be, um, that I had no other options, I was like, you know what, I can be chaotic and they'll keep me in the game longer. So for anybody to be like, oh, it was blind luck that when you made it far. No, I had some strategy with the, the, with the cards I was dealt. So it, during that tribal, I didn't know Chris was going home. And I was just so irritated at that point. I was like, Chris is basically carrying the tribe and you guys like vote him out. Like now, do you think we're gonna win challenges? Like, I don't understand. Like I know they anticipated a, a tribe swap. I mean, again, I don't, I'm not questioning any of the gameplay because I, if I was in their position, I would have probably done the same thing. But just thinking in my standpoint, what would have been better obviously didn't benefit them. But so, so Chris, Chris went out and instantly when we get back to camp, the shit start, shit talking starts and they're all talking shit about him, how he ate so much, how this and that. And I'm just like, Jesus, like nobody can do anything right around here. He carried the camp. He did most of the work and what he can't have an extra cup of rice. So it was just so much. I was just so irritated. And then, um, so I had to return the flint and I returned it that night. And the next morning they were like, hey, look, the flip mysteriously um, uh, reappeared. And I was like, oh yeah, cause I took it. I already anticipated a tribe swap. So I was like, oh, I took it. And they just looked at me. Like if I did the biggest sin in the world, I was like two seconds ago, you guys were freaking doing stuff to me, you know? And they were like, why would you do that? And I was like, oh, maybe because you guys did this, 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 and this to me. And they were like, Ugh. and I was just like, whatever, I'm, I'm just done. So, um, so that's when you see me being like little chaotic Wendy when when David's like, are you even trying to win? I'm just like, of course I am. But like, again, what am I supposed to do with these people that just don't want to work with me? So I just wanted to illustrate when I started being crazy. I started being crazy on day seven of the game. So a whole week of me just not doing anything to them and then being assholes to me, that's when my chaos started, whatever. And But again, in the edit, it just shows that Day on the third episode I go off the rails and I start torturing people these nice angelic people that got like the best like there's certain people on this season that got like godly edits Some people are just edited so you can like them and they don't highlight any of their very bad qualities so then it goes to the tribe swap and then I get swapped so then here's the moment you've all been waiting for the chickens <laughs> so this was a premeditated thing I'm saying it right now and I know a lot of people don't like me because of this. They call me annoying. They say, how dare you put your right, your, um, your, uh, what's it called? Your views on other people. But I'm telling you right now, this was a premeditated thing. And no, and then I'm going to do the misconceptions. No, I didn't do it to get screen time. No, I didn't do it for the Sia money. And what were some other ones? No, I didn't do it for just to be obnoxious. At the time when I released the chickens, I was I was the Manu one. <laughs> so in this whole thing, I am the only, I am the Manu one. I am the only um, person to have lived on Manu both times. So as far as I was concerned, those chickens were mine. Manu, they, they oh, I didn't mention this. So they ended up killing a rooster. They got fired and they killed a rooster. So they ate, they ate one. They, they, so for anybody thinking I deprived the original tribe of eating the rooster, or the chickens or anything, I didn't. They ate a rooster, they made, they made fire without the flint. That was on me, I did take the flint, but they didn't, they did eat a rooster. And the days after, it's not like I was like just sabotaging them right to left. They could have eaten the chickens, they just chose not to. So then comes Mono 2.0. I genuinely liked Mono 2.0. They, at, going into it, they had such a good vibe that I was just like, I, 
I was like, you know what? This is how I always imagined Survivor to be. So then going back to the chickens, I still believe this. Those were my chickens. Like I was the Manu one. I was the only original uh, tribe member that actually won those chickens. And Kama had come off of eating a feast every day or eating rewards and eating this and they had so much food. So I was just like, you know what? These are my chickens. And I, I feel me personally, like for them to just waltz in there and be like, oh, look, we have another reward. I was like, no, like the, I don't want to kill these chickens. And if they're not going to listen to me, well, then I'm going to do something about it. So going back to the chickens, like, um, I want to make it very clear. Yeah, I was not a vegetarian going into the game. I am now, but I wasn't going into the game. And, um, oh, that whole, that whole talk that they were asking me like, oh, you're not a vegetarian. So why do you want to do this? It, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if I wasn't a vegetarian. I just, I am very compassionate towards animals. And I, I feel like I, my problem is that I connect so much with just, with any little living being and stuff that if it's right in front of me I'm and I can save it, I will. So then, so we went on a whole tangent when I was explaining. I was getting just frustrated with like how they were like saying over and over. Like the conversation was going in a circle saying like, well, you're not a vegetarian. Whatever. So I was basically done at that point. I was like, okay, well, you know what? What am I going to do? Fight factory farming. So again, I still, I still know that a lot of people aren't going to agree with me. And I don't really care if anybody agrees with me. I just know that in my heart, I knew I couldn't kill these chickens. And for anybody to suggest that I did it for money, like... I'm in a game for a million dollars and I'm doing other things to not like thwarting my attempts at winning a million dollars So do you think whatever other sum makes sense to anybody? So yeah So anybody curious about like the whole chicken thing like that's what happened I know I did have like a lot of negative things that went on in my game and um, The reason I stayed so positive is because again the like, good things did come out of the experience um my favorite part of the whole um, game was challenges. Like, oh, if there's one thing I love is the challenges. I'm a really competitive person. So when I was there, when they would like show us the challenges, I was just so amazed at how they even built this stuff. And I was like, I'm going to get to play this. Like, I see this on my TV and I'm actually going to get to play this. So I was just so excited. So I think my favorite um, challenge win was when we were with Mono 2.0. And I helped win the um, the immunity uh, for the the, for the very first one actually. So it was when uh, we had to go up like the A frames and stuff, and then finally um, I swapped out for Aubrey in the puzzle, and then I did like the little planks, and I helped win it. I was so ecstatic because I was like, "This is what winning is! Like this is putting in all of your effort and actually receiving like you know the reward." It, that that moment was even more special because when we won. Like my, I, we were with Manu 2.0 and they knew that I hadn't won anything. So they all pushed me forward to go get the immunity idol. And just like the second I grabbed it from Jeff, I was just so happy. And I was just like, this is Survivor. Like this is what I said. So everything else kind of floods, floods away. You're just like, you know what? Yeah, you're lonely, this and that. But like at the end of the day, like you're here because you love this game. So I think that would be one of my favorite like um, moments from the game. Okay, so now we move forward to the Aubrey vote. So then coming to the Aubrey vote, once we lost that um, challenge and just feel like just the vibe around camp, I knew already that Manu 2.0 didn't want to work with returning players. So I felt very comfortable at that point. So let's fast forward to the part where I'm talking, it's uh, me, Vic and Aubrey, and we're all sitting there. Um, and they were basically like, at the time, I didn't know the plan. I did not know the plan about the Aubrey thing, but I already in my mind, I was like, I'm going to, target Aubrey if, if it's me then it's me but I'm at least gonna shoot my shot so I was sitting there and they hadn't talked to me about anything so um they started asking me like oh what kind of player do you want to be this and that and they were they were asking me to throw a name out and obviously Gavin and Eric weren't there so it would have had to be one of their names so the point is I didn't want to throw out Gavin or Eric's name because Victoria was there I knew Victoria would just run around and be like, oh, hey, you know what, Wendy and, and Gavin are, even if I survive this vote, she'd be like, well, don't trust Wen Wendy because she's going to throw out any name whenever she can. So what I wanted to do is, again, play that dumb role saying like, oh, well, I don't know, whatever you guys want to do this and that in front of um, Aubrey. So then that's why afterwards, I guess Vic was confused. She wasn't in on the plan. But again, any anybody can tell that you guys are gunning for Aubrey, right? So they were just like, oh, so who do you want? I was like, well, you know what, you guys, I don't really have a 
uh, a say in this so whoever you guys say that's who i'm gonna go with you know you guys have the numbers and they're like okay so well th so then i think aubrey was like okay well are you good with gavin and i was like are you guys and then like and then Vic was like i'm good with gavin i was like okay me too i didn't want to be the first one to say hey this person just to say my butt so then it looks like i'm not loyal it just looks like i'm a really dumb player so then aubrey leaves and then victoria leaves to like do something down the path so then i chase after victoria and then i said hey victoria i think it's a good idea to get aubrey out right now because come merge would you rather have an alliance in her that's going to be a big target or in someone like me that we can go under the radar together and she was just basically like yeah 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 so if you get eric and gavin on board then we'll do that i was like okay okay cool so then i wrote slither on over to gavin i'm like hey gavin guess what aubrey threw your name under the bus uh, do you want to get rid of her and he was like yeah yeah i'm with you 100 percent so then i slither on over to eric and i'm like hey eric so guess what aubrey wants to do a guy alliance a, a girl alliance and, and it's targeting gavin and wasn't gonna tell you he's like wow really so me over here i'm thinking i'm like the big mastermind i'm like ooh, look at me making big moves and apparently like it was already planned it was so funny like hearing that after Afterwards, that like obviously I wasn't the big mastermind but oh I was like going around with, like puff chest I was like oh I did that I just did that so obviously it wasn't me but I just want to I just want to say like with me not having any resources or allies I think I played that beautifully just making myself look like really dumb even though I'm pretty sure I was just dumb but um at least like it kind of gave Aubrey that like confidence of saying like oh hey you know what like Wendy is just that easy vote so then my vote out comes so the challenge happens and when Jeff tells us, hey, two tribes are going to tribal, I'm like, if we lose this, I'm going home. So we lost it, and I was like, I'm going home. Immediately after we lost that, I was like, there's no way I'm surviving tonight's tribal. So so when we get back to like um, to, to camp, I just told like the producers, I was like, oh, well, my goose is cooked. It was nice knowing you guys, because I, I already knew I was going home. Like, first, we were like, nobody has idols, nobody has extra votes, nothing. So they were like, okay, well, we're just going to try to do this. And they tried to pitch me some bullshit that was like, hey, Wendy, so we're going to give your name, but we don't mean that. We're going to rocks. And I was like, yeah, buddies, yeah, I trust you. So I went to the producers. I was like, there's no way these assholes are going to rocks for me. I'm going home. But if there's anything I can do is possibly talk to David. Possibly. Let's see. So uh, we go we go to the tribal and stuff and, and everybody's talking and then and uh, David asks to talk to me. So I go over to him and I, I, I wanted just to gauge what he's doing. So he told me, Wendy, vote for Eric. And at that moment, I was like, oh, okay, they're there. That's like, that was my only life raft and I'm going home. I was just like, they're going to vote for me. So they basically wanted me to throw away my vote and it would have been a 4-3-1. Um, so, so I tell, I tell David, I'm like, yeah, dude, oh, anything, anything, yeah, I'll work with you, whatever. So then finally, when they read the votes and stuff, um, they read the first vote, and it's like, Wendy. And then I look at David all scared, and then he looks at me like a monster. <laughs> I love David, by the way, it was just a, such a good scene. And then, so they read, and then they're like, Lauren, and then they're like, Wendy, and then I look at David wor worried again, and they read the votes, and they're like, okay, for Wendy, for Lauren, and then I look at David, and I'm like, ah, you thought, and he was like, ah. So that was a pretty good scene. So when, so when we locked um, Wendy and Lauren, um, that's when everybody started whispering and stuff. And there was nothing I can say. Old Manu didn't like me. They knew they didn't want to work with me. New uh, Manu was just like, oh, you know what? We're jumping ship with Kama. Basically plotting all around me. And like Jeff was just like, uh, and I was like, that's that's been my whole game, Jeff. Like literally this is my game. And I was like, like I've run out of my lives. Like my nine lives, they're all out. So basically that's why I was like really happy when I left because again we didn't know about EOE. So when I was I I felt at that moment I was just like you know what I've accomplished so much and I've like survived so much with the hand that I was dealt that I was just so happy. Every time I was at tribal council I was smiling admiring everything because I was inside my TV screen like a lot of you guys like I'm a fan so when I was there like I would just say at Jeff asking me questions I'm like is this real life so every time you guys saw me with a smile and everything like I just couldn't get rid of it um Jeff would ask me all the time Wendy like you're you're always smiling you're you're you can be out and I was like well I I can't not smile being here so when I got voted out like again everybody's just like my game's ruined I'm out a million dollars and this and that and for me I was like oh my god Jeff Jeffrey is about to snuff my torch. So I went and it was so funny because the entire game, I want him to call me Big Wendy. I'm Big Wendy. 
So um, he wouldn't, he wouldn't. He would call everybody else by their nicknames. He wasn't calling me. So I was just like, I'm going to shoot my shot. So I put my little torch down. I was like, Jeff, can you call me Big Wendy? And then he like kind of smirked and everybody laughed. And he was like, Big Wendy, the tribe is spoken. And he's nothing else. So happy. And everybody was like, oh, it's a coping, me coping mechanism. She's screaming inside. I'm like, no, this is the coolest thing. Jeff just called me Big Wendy. What? So then, um... So then whatever, I, I go down the path. Oh, and then that whole, oh my God, Wendy said cheeseburger. I thought she was a vegetarian. Um, I was trying to make um, mostly Gavin jealous because every night we would talk about junk food and stuff. And I was like, so when I was like saying I was going to go Ponderosa, right before I walked away, Gavin was like, oh, go have a burger for me. And I was like, yeah, we will do. And then, so then when I walked down the path, I was like, cheeseburger and shower. So that's why people just went off the rails. And I was like, well, if you guys had the whole story, then you wouldn't. Uh, so then I go down the path and I see the sign and for me Again survivor is just like I was just again I was already smiling ear to ear and I was like this when I saw the sign I read okay You could either go home or you can continue I grabbed that torch to go continue my adventure because again I love adventures. It's not like for me. It's like oh, there's more to come here. I go and so I grabbed that torch so a funny thing that I was thinking of is that okay, so I'm jumping ahead here, but I'll, I'll go back to it after but if I would have when when I pulled the cell and we were like floating away in the boat and stuff if, there, if we came across another sign saying go home this way or continue an adventure here I would have gone that way because again there's there's always so many adventures that I can have but again I'll go back to the whole pulling the cell later so I get to EOE and I wish they would have shown this so when I landed there I was like what's going on what's happening and then I just hear in the distance no and I'm like what what and then I realized that it's the other the other players. I got voted up. I was like, ah, yeah, Wendy in the house, Wendy in the house. I started dancing in there. And then I get there, and then everyone's like, and then Reem's like, I'm so happy to see you, but I can't believe they voted you off. And she was like all sad. And Keith was like, no, I didn't want to see you here. And then um, Rick and Chris are just laying there. And then I just see Aubrey like behind the fire, and I'm like, oh gosh. They just all look like, I, I quote, I said, what during my confessional when I got to the edge I was like they look like the pit of despair like it just looks so bad um so I get there and I'm just like what is this place and they're like yeah it's just nothing like we just sit here and wait and I'm just like I mean I mean there's challenges no no we just sit here and wait I mean there must be something no no we just sit here and wait and I was like okay so whatever so then that morning happens and they're like there are boats coming and then they they're like oh my god something's finally happened i'm like what so i get hyped with them and they're like oh time to return and i was like and i felt so bad because i was like i literally spent like an hour here and like look we're already going back into the game so then so then um going into the game so then um going into the challenge when we were doing the walkthrough and seeing it i was like i'm going to win the challenge i don't know why i had this overwhelming thought that I was gonna win the challenge so I do the whole entire thing the whole entire thing and then BAM I get to that puzzle and I'm doing it and I'm doing it and for me I mean my Tourette's is is I've I've had it my entire life so it's nothing new to me so I basically know how to con not control it but I know how to manage around it so um uh certain things I talk about this in my other videos but certain things they're called triggers and they trigger ticks so I could be completely normal one second and then I start playing Xbox and all of a sudden I'm ticking a lot or if I talk about them. Um, so then, so unfortunately that, that, um, um, the last, the maze really triggered my ticks because I had to be holding something. And usually when I can't use this hand, my, my ticks get triggered a lot, especially this one. So then, so whatever, I'm at that challenge and then that challenge had two balls to sink. So I'm getting it, I'm getting it, and I hear just Jeff like around, and he's just like, oh, they dropped their ball, they dropped their ball, and I'm going, and I'm going. Doing doing the challenge, doing the challenge, and um, I sink that first ball. And Jeff is like, oh, so um, I sink that first ball, and I drop it, and I'm like, fuck yeah. And then like, I guess I forgot that we had to sink too, and then Jeff was like, go Wendy, and I was like, oh yeah. So then I run and I get the second ball, and I start doing that one. And I'm doing it, and again, in my head, I'm just like, I'm gonna win. Ooh, look at me, I'm so cool, I'm gonna win. And then, um, so I'm already, like, maybe a quarter of the way before, maybe maybe a little more, um, um, when somebody else sinks their ball. And um, at this time, uh, people have been dropping their balls instantly, and say a lot, a lot. And before the challenge happened, Jeff was like, you're not gonna be able to sink the ball without dropping it. And I was just so happy at that point that with my ticks and everything, I sunk the first ball without dropping it once. I was so happy, so... 
So I'm doing it, I'm doing it, I'm halfway through. I'm already 75% through and I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm gonna win my way back in. This is so cool. And I'm doing it, I'm doing it and stuff. And um, so at that point, um, I start, I start like realizing everybody on the bleachers were cheering. They were cheering for everybody um, except me. So I was just like, oh, boohoo, Wendy, cry yourself a river. Nobody likes you anyway. So they, but so I started thinking of that, and I was like, man, fuck you guys. I'm going to win just just because you're not cheering for me. And then at that, I was just like, oh, look, there's a lot of cameras here. And like I just started, re like, I started unfocusing on the on the thing. And I was like, oh, there's a bunch of cameras here. And then um, after I was like, oh, you know what? Like, this is going to be shown it to the United States. Like, this isn't just the people here. Like, there's not only a lot of people here, but it's going to be shown to millions of people. So my tick started acting up more and more. <laughs> and like, I was just like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. So like, aside from having to do the puzzle, like I had to pause every two seconds and really watch it and then like <laughs> do that, right? But my tick, again, I'm going off topic, but my tick, I have to satisfy it like this, hitting my forehead here. So by satisfying it here, it wasn't satisfying. So I had to be doing it more often. So I would have to stop the puzzle do that and like I felt every time I did that and since it was happening so often they were ganging up on me so I started going like fast and I was like oh my god I have to like really concentrate and in that um I don't even remember where it fell but it just slipped and I was already so close to the top like I would like nobody was even no one was even close to me at that point so I could have even slowed down <sighs> so then after that like I started putting the ball and I think I made it again halfway when when Rick sunk his ball and like at that point like I was just really happy for him but I was really frustrated because again I'm a really competitive person when it comes to like just things like that and I was just so frustrated with myself I made peace with me and I had to really calm down so like after the challenge like I, I moved the sign I started like ticking like I really had to do a lot a lot a lot so like I kind of calmed myself down I went back over there and I stood with them and then whatever so that happened and i thought we were we were done so i was just like i i had i was like teary-eyed because i was like oh like that could have been me going back in there um so whatever so then jeff's like oh you guys can go back and i was like yeah buddy and like we were all happy we we're genuinely genuinely happy to go back so um jeff made it clear he was just like you know what you guys aren't gonna be in the game if you guys win your way back you're in the game but up to now you guys are just in the positions that you guys got voted off like you're not in the game anymore and I was like, okay. And he was just like, yeah, so you guys can either leave or you can stay. But we were like, no, no, no let's go back, whatever. So in the whole ride back to like um, the edge, um, I was just thinking, like I just started like, I was just inside my own head and stuff. And I was thinking how, first of all, I was just like really frustrated. But then I started thinking about other stuff that they were telling me about the island, how like you just have to sit there and wait. And, and there wasn't anything to do. There was nothing, right? So when I got there, I was like, you know what? Like... I was thinking of why I'm even I'm I'm even gonna like you know continue. Basically, in my mindset at the time when I was explaining and stuff, I was like, you know what? Um, from what they told me, um, we're just gonna sit here and wait. And for me, during the actual game when we were inside the actual game, uh, we had things called down days where we wouldn't do anything, and I would literally go mad <laughs> during those days because I'm I I am a very very hyperactive person. Like I have, um. To, to do stuff and I was like during those down days I'm sure I got on people's nerves because I would be like oh I need to go get firewood or I need to work on this part or let me do this or I would you know I try to keep my mind busy so when they told me that it was nothing but down days down days down days down days I just started th thinking to myself I was like is is this going to be worth it um to sp basically spoil my survivor experience so far so then when I started talking to the producers and stuff I started going over it I was like you know what there were many, many, many reasons that I went over my head of my decision to leave. I want to go over something that I said after the game, when after the episode aired. I explained how how I was really frustrated with my ticks at the time, but I didn't mean that that was my main reason for leaving. That was one of the contributing factors. And I was really upset when I wrote that because I was seeing a lot, again, it was my own fault for looking for it, but like just on Reddit, just on social media, people were just being like nasty saying like, oh, how convenient that Wendy's Tourette's came back in this last, and we haven't seen in the last episodes. I'm like, do you people understand this is an edited show? Like, they have edited out all of my ticks. Like, they don't need to see, you guys don't need to see me ticking every two seconds, you know? But again, it's online. You can't, like, you expect that. And then I just saw other comments saying, like, oh, I mean, why didn't she just stop them? And I was already just, like, irritated because um one of my castmates had, like, mentioned, like, had just 
mentioned something about like my Tourette's and stuff like without even knowing anything about it just kind of like mentioning stuff again to I don't know I don't know what their purpose was but it, I'm sure they have a justification for that too oh and I saw another comment saying like well Wendy knew she had Tourette's when she went on the show so I don't wanted to think that it's a scapegoat saying like oh that's why I left the island no no I always knew that I was gonna have trouble because it during especially during the individual immunity challenges um when I have to hold anything on my head anything on my um like anything I am gonna have trouble so for people to say that I was using it as an excuse, I was like, I'm not using an excuse, but again, like there's so many people with that are diagnosed with Tourette's that don't see representation on the show. And for them to even see me out there and for me to receive messages of people saying like, you know what, like I, I'm going to apply even if I don't get accepted, I'm going to apply. Or you know what, people make fun of me and you were out in front of America and that was fine. Like I always went on there and I was like, you know what, I don't want my game to play to be overshadowed by my Tourette's. Like I don't want to be like, oh, the Tourette's survivor, you know. I wanted to be Wendy and Wendy has Tourette's that's fine I'm not trying to hide it you know so that's why I'm always so open about it it's, so that was one of my reasons I didn't I didn't want my game to play to be overshadowed by them but at the same time I also didn't want to ruin my survivor experience so a lot of people were saying like oh my god Wendy didn't even spend like like five hours on that island and it's not because the island no, I'm not gonna say that the island wasn't hard because I know from from what everybody tells me it was very very difficult but for me up to that point I saw that um, the elements and the hunger were taking their toll on people. Like, you know what? I'm basically like at the halfway point and I'm not like feeling it at all. Um, so I never really had trouble with like being outdoors or being hungry. Like, yeah, obviously I was hungry, but it wasn't like I'm starving, you know? Um, so I knew I was able to do like the, that in that aspect. But I knew I would have probably gone insane on that island just because of the boredom. Like I, I, my mind is way too hyperactive for that. And I was just thinking like I, I can put myself through it. It's not that I can't do it, but just that is it worth ruining my survivor experience? I always said like I never went on there for the money. And a lot of people are like, well, you must be rich. I'm like, I'm the farthest thing from rich. Just that I don't spend my life chasing money. And that might explain like um, a lot of the things I did on the island. And I know a lot of people go onto the show for money, but for me, it was more for the experience and for trying to be the sole survivor. And just because I didn't pull it through, doesn't mean like a lot of people were like, well, you could have just stayed in the, for me, it was more if I was gonna stay, it was gonna be because I had that money in mind, you know? For me, it was, oh, you know what? Ruin the survivor experience you've already had and just just be miserable for the chance of getting back in. The main thing I wanna stress is that like, I'm, I'm also very, I'm the one that had suggested to leave. I'm choosing to end my adventure when I want to. And they made it really clear at the time. So at the time when it came to pulling the mask, it seemed like there was no bad connotation to pulling the mask, right? So at the time it was basically like, oh yeah, you guys could either stay or leave. So I was just like, you know what, how I had figured it in my mind, I was like, you know what, it's probably whenever you're ready to end your story or you've gotten enough from the island, that's when you leave. And I was like, you know what, I I basically have fulfilled whatever everything I wanted to do. Obviously, I didn't take home the title, Soul Survivor, but I'm happy with what, what, what I had. Um, so before leaving, I had even asked one of the producers, I was just like, hey, this isn't quitting, right? Because if there's one thing I don't like, it's quitting, right? Well, obviously now thinking back. And I was like, well, because if it's quitting, I'll stay. It's not that I have to leave. Like, I remember having this interaction. And then I followed up with this question. I was like, I was like, would you stay? Like, because I was just like questioning. I was just like wondering, like, again, I wasn't leaving like, oh, get me off the side. And I was just like in a right state of mind. And she was like, I would probably say because I'm stubborn. And that kind of solidified my opinion of saying, oh, then I'm going to go because I'm usually a very, very stubborn person. And I was like, well, if, I'm, if there's anything I can learn from Survivor is that like the, you don't always have to be stubborn. I did. I did everything I wanted to. And like maybe if maybe if somebody would have said like, haha, you can't do it. I would have rotted on that island but since it wasn't that there wasn't any of that i was really leaving with a good experience i didn't want to taint any of that so then that's when keith came and was like hey you know what i want to leave too i choose to leave and he had his own reasons for leaving too and again at the time it didn't feel like quitting so now like everyone's like oh well you guys are quitters and this and that everybody can say what they want but you didn't go through that same experience and i guess you didn't you weren't in that same mindset but I don't know why it felt completely optional and completely like we didn't know we were going to make the jury but if we were if we had known we were would have made the jury we would have stayed even though like I should have probably thought that through like that would have made sense but it, since it had never happened before you know and so then once we pulled the mask and then we left and then 
we did go we did end up going on to the pre-jury trip we went to even though we wanted to stay in ponderosa because ponderosa is just so nice such a nice place all the people are so nice and um i want to thank every every last one of the staff on the entire production team and the entire team for everything that they do because it's just they go above and beyond for for the contestants and i just i'm really appreciative of that so we ended up going on the pre-jury trip unfortunately i had to leave i want to say three days into the trip i had a family emergency so they 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 brought me home so yeah that's basically my point of view of everything again after hearing this i hope you guys just have a little more perspective on who i am as a person what happened in the game and just a, a like a look beyond the edit i want to thank all of you guys who, those of you who have supported me along the ways maybe some of you guys just have a better understanding and just like you know are like oh well maybe wendy isn't that annoying or wendy isn't that bad and if you still hate me well then sorry if you guys have any other questions for me go ahead and comment below if i get enough questions i can go ahead and make a part two to this part two to this video because i know it was i mean it was long but if you guys just want a little bit more specifics or i can do an ama on reddit or wherever i think another question that i had was asked a lot is if i would ever play again and i would definitely a thousand percent play again like that game is just so fun i hope you guys would enjoy me on your screen again and um i think that's pretty much it so thank you guys for listening bye